Welcome back to Game Galaxy, and today we're talking about Final Fantasy Mystic Quest for the Super Nintendo. I love the Final Fantasy series, and I was heavily into them for many, many years and throughout my high school years. And I also love the word quest. Just say it with me. Quest! That's such a great word. And I automatically love anything that has the word quest in it. You know, even though Game Galaxy is less than a year old, I have thought about doing this show for many, many years, and I always thought I would call this show The Game Quest. But years ago, I hopped on YouTube and, yeah, thanks, Wood. Mystic Quest was originally released in North America here in 1992, and a little history of this game is that Square had just come off the cuff of releasing Final Fantasy IV here in North America as Final Fantasy II, and they noticed a gap between the number of sales between Japan and America. And so the idea for Mystic Quest was dreamed up to be sort of an introductory type RPG to get Western audiences used to the Japanese RPG Western genre. Now there's a lot of different opinions and reviews out here on YouTube that say this game is ridiculously easy and mundane and not that great, but I'm here to tell you that I absolutely love this game and it is such a nostalgic and blissful quest. Right off the bat, you're thrown into an earthquake with a mountain collapsing and being guided by an old man riding a cloud. He tells you that the world is in crisis and like a lot of Final Fantasy stories, the four crystals need to be reclaimed from the forces of evil to save the world and you are the hero of legend. Immediately you're thrown into your first battle and it takes place from the point of view from behind your character, much like the Fantasy Star series. I really like how big all the enemy sprites are. When an enemy is damaged and close to being defeated, their sprite will change and show them in a hurt state or position and it gives a really dynamic feeling to the battles. You'll notice in this first battle your health bar is literally displayed as a graphic as opposed to the fraction numbers, but you can change this in the settings so I suggest you do that because that's a better way to keep track of your health. This this is definitely a beginner's role-playing game, but that is by no means a bad thing at all. This game is extremely accessible for someone of a younger age or anyone looking to be introduced to the role-playing genre. The overworld map works much like Super Mario World, where you move between designated points of interest as opposed to free-roaming exploration. Along the path there are battlefields where there are 10 rounds of enemies to battle. You can skip these if you like, but they're put there to get you leveled up before entering the next area, so I recommend that you do them. Completing all 10 rounds will will get you a lot of golden experience, and some of them give you armor and even a spell. And that's another positive I can give this game, is that there's no random battles. All the enemies can be seen on screen and only activate a battle if you approach and make contact with them. Battles can be avoided if you like, but I'm a little bit of a completionist in that I have to kill every last one of the monsters in a dungeon. Make sure you stay stocked on potions and healing items because you'll be using them a lot. In fact, you'll find yourself quite frequently healing after every single battle. Another element that I think is absolutely great that's often criticized is if you die in battle, you're given the option to restart that same battle from the beginning, giving you a second chance. You can also just choose to load an earlier save like normal as well, but this is great especially because your party will only ever consist of you and one other person, and there's times where both of you will get petrified one after another and there's nothing you can do. So being able to reload that same battle and try something else is greatly appreciated. It also takes the pressure off of a newcomer to role-playing games to really understand a balance of using healing items and attacking. As you progress throughout the game, you'll get a number of different weapons, each with their own strengths and abilities. A really awesome feature is that you can switch between these weapons in real time in battle and use the weapon that is best suited for the situation as some monsters have weaknesses to particular weapons. All armor and weapons are automatically equipped using the strongest of each kind and each time a weapon gets an upgrade it's automatically replaced. So beyond having to find the weapons and armor you don't have to worry about equipping anything. The various weapons are also used outside of battle in the exploration sections. The axe can be used used to chop down trees, the sword will help push hidden buttons on statues, the claw helps you climb walls and grapple to hook points, and the bombs will blow open walls revealing secrets. This level of interactive exploration is really awesome and you can actually jump as well which has a great sound effect. During your quest, various characters will join you and you can choose to have them fight automatically by themselves or control them manually. Obviously you should choose to control them manually, but the option to have them make their own decisions is there. NPCs don't earn experience or items, so you don't have to worry about dealing with their equipment. You can also save anywhere you like and at any time, even inside of dungeons, and that's awesome compared to the usual save spots you have in other Final Fantasy games. The main bosses that guard each crystal are very fun and diverse, as well as giving you quite a variety of 
cave locations to explore, such as a desert, an ice pyramid, and a volcano. What's really great is when you recover a crystal, it sets things right and the nearby town will transform. For example, until you retrieve the ice crystal, the town of Aquaria is a frozen tundra, as is the surrounding land, and poor grandma is sick in bed. But once you defeat the fiend and restore the crystal, the land is green and plentiful, and Aquaria transforms into a beautiful town, and grandma feels great again. I love seeing how the towns and map changes over time as you progress through the story. There are some puzzle sections with sliding blocks that won't make you think too hard, but still provide a small brain tease. The graphics and colors have that really special Super Nintendo feel to them that's extremely palatable, and the music is just perfection and a stellar attribute to this game. I especially love the variation of the town's theme in Fireberg. All in all, I don't understand the negativity people give this game as it's a very cute, easygoing RPG that's enjoyable if you're craving a simple adventure wrapped in a bow of nostalgia and simpler times. This game is pretty affordable for the Super Nintendo, but it's also available on the Wii Virtual Console. Before I had my own copy of Mystic Quest and my own Super Nintendo, I used to play this after high school at my friend Doug's house, and my friend Pfeiffer would tag along as well. Doug would jump on his computer, and Pfeiffer was my moral support, or sometimes he'd just take a nap on Doug's bed, and I would jump on Doug's Super Nintendo. It's been 10 years since those days, and I was able to revisit all that nostalgia by going through this adventure again for this video, and I stand strong in saying that I love Final Fantasy Mystic Quest. So thank you very much for watching. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss any videos in the future, and may you be blessed as you embark on your own Mystic Quest.